Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. is just what I needed, Mr. Dillon. I sure been sleepy today. Uh, you got spring fever, Chester. I guess so. It is nice weather, ain't it? Won't be long now. The cattle drives will be starting. Yeah, and the streets will be full of Texas cowhands looking for trouble. Yes, sir. But you know I'm almost looking forward to them this year. <laughs> and I'll come July, you'll be pining for this peace and quiet. Maybe, but not right now. Uh, maybe I'll just stop by the tonsorial, Mr. Dillon, if it's all right with you. Uh, sure. Well, what for? Well, like you said, it's spring. They got a bath there. Besides, it's time to get unsold. <laughs> you better leave them on. We might have a late frost. I don't know. I'm beginning to itch some. And I... Hey, what's that crowd in front of the Long Branch? Yeah, I don't know. What do you suppose it is, Mr. Dillon? Hey, maybe it's a medicine show. Well, let's go take a look, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, whatever it is, that, that fellow sure has drew a crowd, and that's a fact. Uh-huh. There he is. Miss Kenny's talking to him. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess there can't be no trouble, then. Oh, hello, Matt. Oh, Kitty. Hey, Marshal, you come to have your picture took, too? Yeah. <laughs> the Marshal looked real smart in a tintype. Huh? You tell him to. Ah, uh, so that's it. You're taking pictures, huh? That's right, Matt. This is Professor Jacoby. He calls himself an artist of the camera. Well, forevermore. So this is one of them things I've been hearing about. That's right. Oh, well, oh, oh, keep your hands. What? Keep oh. your hands off it, my good man. It's a very sensitive instrument. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry. Well, you're Marshal Dillon, I take it, sir. That's right. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Marshal. I was coming to look you up directly. Quite naturally, you're one of the subjects I most wish to immortalize with the camera. Oh, is that so? Certainly, certainly. Western Marshal is one of our great heroes back east. They are? You don't say. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, say, uh, yes, Professor, what, what is uh, it? what's that little tent for? Oh, that's where I do my developing, sir. Oh, developing? Why, of course. Pyro and soda, you understand. Well, uh, And the plate must be developed immediately before it dries. Oh, uh, naturally. Now, miss. Oh, well... I'm as ready as I'll ever be. You stand aside, will you? Uh, yes, if you'll just relax, miss. Uh-huh. I'm not going to shoot you, you know. <laughs> okay. Now, let me see. Uh, now, that's not precisely what I'm after. Hmm? What we need is another subject. I beg your pardon? Oh, another person. Ah, uh, you, sir, would you step up, please? Uh- Yes, you, me, you. Me? That's right. <laughs> How do you like that? He's going to immortalize old Toad. <laughs> just come right over here. Sir. That's it. That's it. Uh, now, Miss, if you'll just stand beside him. Him? Well, anything for art's sake, you know. And we want this to look absolutely authentic. 
I think I'm going to like this, Miss Kitty. Now, don't go getting any ideas, Toad. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Now, Miss, if you'll just look up at him with that, uh, uh, well, you know what I mean. No, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, well, Professor, I... why don't you just take your pictures of people the way you find them? They'll be authentic oh, enough. No, no, of course, Marshal. I, I meant no offense. That's all right, man. Go ahead, Professor. Yes, of course. That's it. Uh, hey, where's he going? Well, ducking under that black cloth there. Hey, well, you're going to have a hard time crawling into that little box. <laughs> 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 that's good now. That's good now. Don't, think... don't take your eyes off the camera and don't move a muscle while I'm counting. Hmm? You understand? Uh-huh. All right, take a big breath. Hold it. One Missouri, two Missouri, three Missouri, four Missouri, five Missouri, Missouri, seven Missouri, eight Missouri, nine Missouri, ten Missouri, eleven. Good. Good. <laughs> well, ain't that something, oh, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> You know, I want to see that picture, Kitty. You look like the camera was a rattlesnake. Well, it might as well have been. I'm glad it's over. And now, Marshal. Uh, Marshal, maybe you will oblige. Well, uh, no, thank you, Professor. Maybe later. Huh? Uh-huh. And perhaps I'll take one of these gentlemen here. Uh, you, sir. You look like a gunfighter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Grubbs may try to look and act like a gunman, Professor, but he's not very desperate. Oh, oh I see. Uh, well, uh, perhaps you have someone in your jail, Marshal. No, not at the moment. Ah. I know what the Eastern public wants, sir, what it wants to see. Dance hall girls and desperados, gunfighters, savage Indians, the violence of the West. And it's the violence I'm after, most of all. That's what will sell my photographs. Uh, Professor, then all you have to do is wait. Wait? For how long? Oh, maybe a few weeks when the trail herds start coming. Well, I haven't got a few weeks, Marshal. Well, then I guess we can't help you. Uh. Well, don't worry, Marshal. I'll manage. No? How? Uh, you'll see. <laughs> I'm a man of ideas, Marshal. <laughs> That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, we'd like to introduce a player piano that could have come right out of the Long Branch in Dodge City. Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Morning, Sam. Howdy, Marshal. Morning, Max. Oh, hello, Kitty. Oh, if you mind if I sit on? Well, I haven't yet, have I? Uh. Ah. <laughs> well, what are you grinning about? I saw your picture. What was that you said to me about rattlesnakes? Oh, yeah, it was pretty bad, wasn't it? Well, maybe if you didn't have to hold still for so long. Sure. Anyway, you're immortalized now. The professor will have your face all over the papers back east. (laughs) If they'll print it. (laughs) Matt, seriously. Hmm? 
I don't like that man. Oh? There's something about him. I don't know what it is. Oh, he seems all right, Kitty. Maybe you're just not used to photographers. Well, neither are you. Mr. Dillon? Oh, uh, yeah, Chester. Mr. Dillon, you better come. Now, what's the matter? Out at the end of Bridge Street, they just found old Toad. He's dead. Dead? But that ain't all. He's been scalped. <laughs> What do you make of it, Matt? I don't know, Doc. Neither do I. There hasn't been any Indian trouble lately. Surely no Indian come this close to town. Doc, it wasn't an Indian. That's not the way they use a knife. Well, then, who did do it, Mr. Dillon? Old Toad wasn't much good, but he never hurt nobody. There's another funny thing, Matt. Doesn't look like it was done right here. But like it was done over there by that building. And then he was dragged out here into the open. Yeah, out in the open. End of the sunlight. Yeah, wait a minute. What are you looking for, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, this right here, Chester. Well, I... I don't see nothing. Those Mr. three Dillon. little marks on the ground there. You know what makes marks like that? No, what? The three-legged stand they use for a surveyor's instrument. Or a camera. Camera? Matt, no man would do that just for a picture. Well, there's one way to find out. Come in, come in. Ah, oh, Marshal. Ah, oh, Professor. Looks like you're packing. Are you going someplace? Oh, yes, yes, Marshal. I've covered Dodge pretty thoroughly. Now I want to go out onto the plains and get some pictures. You know, buffalo hunters, Indians. Aren't you leaving kind of sudden? Well, what do you mean? I've been planning to go down into the Indian Territory. Well, they might be pretty dangerous right now, Professor. Oh, I'm not timid, Marshal. Oh, I know that. But did you hear there's Indian trouble starting? The man was scalped this morning right here in Dodge. Yes, I heard something of it. But I'm not frightened. Why not, Professor? Because you know it wasn't an Indian that did it? Just what do you mean, Marshal? I'd just like to know how you were able to get there and take a picture at Toad before anybody else knew anything about it. Uh, perhaps I was just lucky, Marshal? I met the man who found him. I think it was more than luck. Are you accusing me of killing that man? Maybe you didn't do it yourself. But I think you hired it, Don. Can you prove that? I can when I find the man you hired. <laughs> the whole thing is ridiculous, Marshal. Besides, he was nothing but a scavenger, a derelict. He was a man, and it was murder. Whoever did it will hang for well, it. Well, it's no concern of mine. Unless, of course, I can take a photograph of the hanging. You'll do anything for a picture, won't you? Well, almost anything, Marshal. Like I told that... Girl, <laughs> anything for art's sake. And that was a good picture I got of Toad, Marshal. Perhaps you'd like to see it. No, thanks. <laughs> well, it's going to be quite a feather in my cap when I take it back east to Harper's. Maybe you won't take it back east, Jacoby. This might be one picture you paid too high a price for. <laughs> Why didn't you lock him up? I got no proof against him, Doc, unless I can find the man who actually did it. And I got no idea who that is. Jacoby's been seen around town with a lot of men, but nobody's special. Uh, he's liable to skip town on you. Well, I hope so. What's that? Well, I figure he's going down into Indian territory. He won't go alone. Even he's not that foolish. And a logical one to go along with him is a man he's already hired to do a job for him. Uh. Yeah, that's so. Anyway, it's the last chance I got. Well, the town sure stirred up about it. You'd never have thought old Toad had a single friend. Sure, they're upset. They think it was Indians. And the professor put the picture on display in the window of the Dodge house. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard. And maybe it was him started to talk about 
calling the cavalry out against the Indians. Well, he'd like nothing better than an Indian war to photograph. What kind of a man is that? I don't know, Doug. Mr. Dillon, Moss Grimmick says a professor left town just before dawn this morning. Alone? Nope. Tom Grubbs was with him. Tom Grubbs. Sure. A two-bit would-be gunman. All right. Now all we got to do is catch up with him. Where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your favorite easy chair? Or... Out driving? Oh, there you are. In the kitchen. Say... You want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. I don't like it, Mr. Dillon. I don't like it a little bit. What, Chester? All this Indian sign. Now, you just keep your eyes open. We'll manage. I guess Jacoby will be happy. You should be getting all the pictures he can use. I notice he's stopped several times. Pictures? I hope I never meet another photographer. Well, maybe they aren't all like him, Chester. Well, I hope not. Hold up, Chester. Hmm? What, Mr. Dillon? Something over in that clump of weeds there. Marshal. Marshal. What, man? A white man, Mr. Dillon, is grub. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh. oh. Marshal. Mr. Dillon, he's been hurt bad. Uh, he's bleeding. Yeah, he's been knifed. Help me, Mar- Marshal. Where's Jacoby? Oh, there. Somewhere, I don't know, I, I ran and hit. What happened? Indian. Cheyenne. I told you, Kobe, but he wouldn't, wouldn't listen. I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't listen. Told him what? About, about the burial ground. Bad enough just being here. And then he, him trying to take pictures of Cheyenne. There was only three of them. But when he saw him taking a picture at the burial ground, he... My goodness, that's bad, Mr. Dillon. Uh-huh. They get awful mad when somebody fools around the burying place. What did they do, Grubbs? <laughs> he attacked us. Fought one of them off, and, and I ran and hid. I guess it, it couldn't find me. <laughs> Grubbs. Why don't you tell me about it? About what? About Toad. All right, I'll tell you. Professor gave me a lot of money. I guess I shouldn't have done it. If Marshall? Yeah. I didn't even get my picture took. (laughs) Ain't that... Sure was some gunman. Killing a helpless little old man for money. Yeah. Now let's see about Jacoby now. 
Hey, Mr. Dillon, you think them Cheyenne might still be around? No, they just showed up by now, Chester. There's the burial ground. Hey, look. There's his camera. Yeah. All smashed. And his pictures? All scattered around with it. My gracious. Chester, huh? over here. That ain't a nice sight, is it, Mr. John? No. There's a kind of justice in it, Chester. Yeah. They did to him just what he had grubs do to old Toad. Well, we better bury him. Then maybe we better gather up those pictures. What for? We'll send them back east for him. Maybe they'll be immortal like he hoped. Who knows? He might turn out to be a big hero. And wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Not there have been heroes like that before. All right, come on. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, at best, it was hard to scratch out a living on the high plains. But next week, hunger, disease, and a baby combine to defeat a man. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. L&M. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.